In the center of this diagram, we say that uh, this primal ego motivation, which drives our current values, even if we don't live by them, the ones we espouse, the ones we say are important, the ones we utilize to develop rules, regulations, and systems of governance and our priorities and the processes and ways that we develop in life, that generates a status quo of social process that people feel safe in because it's so familiar, so seemingly necessary for stability, so seemingly necessary for them to have, hold down a job, have enough money for food and shelter, have relationships, have family, and, and do some amount of good in the world and also experience life in a positive way. This status quo generates cultures, tradition, mindsets, beliefs, decision-making criteria, and tribal developmental processes with just a smidge of evolution tossed in. So more tribe does not mean smarter tribe. More tribe does not mean conscious tribe. More tribe does not mean peaceful tribe. More tribe does not mean sustainable tribe or service to humanity tribe or service to the natural world tribe. It just means more tribe doing what tribes do. So we've said that this non-sustainable present, which is saying that pollution is okay and that self-interest focus is all that really matters and that's the only thing that should be motivating humanity. So wh what else would be motivating? Why, why would we choose anything other than just having fun or having what we want? We can say, oh gosh, look at this poor people dying in the Ukraine and, and did you know that my, my favorite TV show's on tonight? Look at these people going through horror and suffering and gosh, what's for dinner? That discontinuity of perspective, that, that compartmentalization of understanding and care is something we must transcend together as a species. We're not suggesting not enjoying your dinner or your favorite television show. We are suggesting that turning on and off one's caring like a light switch or having it turned off by the distractions of a, a Western lifestyle is going to turn off our capacity to change the world for the better. The human process is, is fragmented. We have all these different parts of our systems that we move into and operate from. In one moment, we're a loving parent. The next moment, we're a spouse. The next moment, we're a, a person competing in a career. In the next moment, we're, we're a part of the tribe, hanging with our friends. Those, those are discrete compartmentalized vantage points that for most human beings don't get syn synthesized, integrated, blended. So they lit literally, when we're watching our favorite television show, the pain of the world seems to have disappeared. When we're, when we're out with our friends having a good time, the suffering of billions of people seems to have no meaning or relevance. Is that a broken way of living life? Is that a dysfunctional modality of, of human life experience? We're not suggesting burdening yourselves with the pain of the world every day and every moment. We are suggesting that having, recognizing that it's necessary to take time out for yourselves. It's necessary to recuperate, to restore, to revitalize, to heal to meditate, to find peace in your heart amidst the tumultuousness of this world. And as long as that's a conscious choice that you, that you make, it's fantastic, it's wise, it's necessary, it's vital. Otherwise we get burned out and worn out by life. That said, for, for how many people is that process unconscious? And so unconscious that they tune out the pain and suffering of the world and the dysfunction of the world and they deny accountability and thus they don't take requisite action. 
Thus, they don't change the world for the better. Thus, the Titanic sails on to the iceberg because they did not turn on their consciousness and tune in to what was happening. That is a choice. It's a scary choice for a lot of people. It is a, a stressful cho choice for a lot of people. And, and is it right now, in this moment of human history, a vital choice to, to arrive at consciously and to make every single day, even if it's for five minutes, I'm going to understand what's going on in the world. For five minutes, I'm going to care. For five minutes, I'm going to unconditionally love. That's my commitment. Now, I may only have five minutes in a day. That said, for that five minutes, I love every single person in this world, and I love the ecosystem and every plant and animal and insect in this world, at least for five minutes. And then the next day or a week later, perhaps it'll be six minutes, and then 10. And, and then it becomes possible for it to be an all-day thing for the rest of your lives, if you want that, if you choose that. And the question is, <clears throat> if you do make such a choice without guilt, without shame, without self-criticism, without self-pressurization, without forcing yourself mercilessly and ruthlessly to care, without being harsh with yourself, being loving and gentle and kind to yourself, if you find the capacity to meet the world with love and peace and compassion and kindness, for just a little while, per day, will it be a better world? <laughs>